welcome into Fixer Upper. Wednesday's edition here of Collada and the Prince, the vlog. Kevin Mawai in every Wednesday for Center of the Week. The Prince and I here daily, Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 a.m. You can catch us, 104.5, 104.9 ESPN Baton Rouge. Talk to you a lot, look, a lot going on in, in the world of football. It's crazy. You and I were talking off the air. You can really talk football 52 weeks a year. LSU has Pro Day this Friday, spring football in session, and the NFL owners meetings happening over in Phoenix. Uh, let's start with uh, Pro Day coming up. I know you've got a guy, Sean Donnelly, down at Tulane tomorrow, and then Lyle Collins. Uh, what are your expectations for him on Friday? Yeah, Lyle's going to go out there, and he's going to do everything he did at the Combine. He's, he could potentially impress even more. I think what it's going to be great for him is actually get around coaches, GMs, scouts, and just talk to him, and they can find what kind of person he is. From a, from a bench press, strength and conditioning standpoint, there's nothing more that he can do to impress him. He did that at the Combine. He did that the way he played his senior year. The type of man that he is, young man that he is, it was indicative by the way he came back and the reasons why he came back and played at LSU his senior year. That weighs a lot on decisions to draft guys higher in the draft. Is this a good character kid? He is. I know he is. My agent signed him. My agent's office, Priority Sports, Derek Gilmore is one of the agents out of there. And, and my agent's office doesn't sign guys with bad character issues. And, you know, so um, it's just going to be another feather in his cap, if you will, um, for his pro day. It's, it's going to be more important for guys like Fahoko Fanaika, for Washington, Evan Washington, guys like that who didn't have combine invites, who haven't really been out there. It's more important for those guys than it is for Lyle Collins. Who has – much to gain this year at Pro Day. I mean, we saw last year Zach Mettenberger put on a heck of a sure. performance coming off that knee injury. This year, who, who are you looking at? I think there's two guys that I'm paying attention to. Uh, neither of them went to the Combine. That's Ronald Martin and Jamari Rasco. I think when you look at the NFL right now, the NFL is, is, is a league. Last year they had five safeties drafted in the first round. The NFL is always looking for safeties that can move around. He's a very good athlete. He's a guy that, you know, certainly start, being a starter at LSU means something to the in, in the NFL's eyes. So it's a big opportunity for – uh, for Ronald Martin, as far as Jamari Rasco goes, this is a this is a draft that is absolutely loaded with edge rushers. His he's going to have to go and have a big day to prove that he's worth the investment of an NFL draft pick. It's going to be a huge day for Jamari Rasco. I think also it's going to be a big day for Kenny Hilliard and uh, and, and Terrence McGee because those guys didn't put up great numbers at the combine. They they played in a platoon system where everybody kind of rotated through. So this is a big day for them. They got to drop their forty times a little bit, and then and they got to they got to show some. And smart football knowledge on the chalkboard when the coaches put them in the, in the meeting rooms. Prince brought up a, a good point this morning on air. Uh, LSU's run game and Jeremy Hill really kind of took a boost in that South Carolina game that year of, of 2012, that season. Uh, that was the first start that Trey Turner had. The right guard yeah. spot is really a big key cog on LSU's running game. They're looking to replace all three interior guys this year. When you're looking at Vidal Alexander training at right tackle here in spring practice and Gerald Hawkins being switched over to the left side, uh, what, what are some of the key elements you're looking for in these interior guys? Well, you got to find guys that are big enough to handle that smash mouth at the guard position. LSU runs a power running game with the, the lead, lead extra, and the gap in the power scheme. So you want a guard that can move. You need a guy athletic enough to move to pull out of a stance, to block at the second level. You also need a guy that can get off his first level block and climb to the second level to open up those big those big runs. That's what Trey Turner was really good at. It was, it was maintaining balance and, and coming with some power at the linebacker position. And so you got a guy like Brumfield, K.J. Malone, uh, Clapp, and then Ethan Posick. I think those four guys are kind of battling out for those three spots. One guy's going to be out on the outside looking in. But what they're really doing is developing depth as well because any one of those four guys would be able to step in in a pinch next year provided he's not the starter. Mickey and Martin, press conference today, 145 with Johnny Jones. Um, Jeff Goodman, ESPN.com, reporting that, uh, reporting that Martin has notified the camp or in the coaching staff that he'll be foregoing his final two years. And, and Jordan, Mickey's still gathering information. What do you expect today? Expect that. I mean, you know, we, we we talked yesterday. Uh, the initial reaction was that both of them were going to declare and they were both going to try to keep their options open. But it looks as though Martin has made his decision. Uh, certainly wish the best for him. I think Mickey's playing it smart. Get waiting, trying to get some more information. Now it's all about you know what does that information tell him. Uh, certainly, what we're hearing is that it's you know unlikely he'll be a first round draft pick. Uh, more likely he's a late second round draft pick to undrafted. And if that's the case, you hope that. Uh, that they make the right move there because, look, it's not a situation where coming back to college is going to be something that's going to be bad for his career. And if in anything, it can only help him. LSU baseball last night, 19 hits and a 13-7 win over Tulane. They wait for Kentucky to come in town this weekend for a three-game set uh, at Alec Box Stadium in uh, Skip Burton Field.
we have not had Kevin explain the new tattoo. Oh. Uh, Let's see it. Tattoo, yeah. It's a... Uh, I can't take it out my. Can't gun. get over the pipes. Oh, that's so right. <laughs> but it's a Polynesian tattoo. It's it's a representative of my family, um, being Hawaiian descent. There's some things in here that represent strength, power, longevity, family. There's a turtle up here that represents, you know, my family. That's my family hunted and fished in the in the oceans in Hawaii. Uh, there's a symbol there to represent my brother that passed away. So in, in Hawaiian or ancient Polynesian times, everybody tattooed each other to recognize what families you're with or the, the warriors in the group and stuff like that. So it's a cultural thing that we did. It was a good deal. And, and it was my son's, it was my son's 18th birthday. There. Well. there is an M. It, if the, the flow of it, it goes to an M to create, you know, from a Y family. Uh, my son turned 18. He wanted a tattoo. So when you turn 18, you pay for it yourself, but we're going to get the very best to do it. And it was a, a renowned Polynesian tattoo artist that, that came in and we commissioned him. Is that the right word? That's right. We commissioned him to do our work for us. And Kirkland put it on his rib cage, right? Yeah, he put it on his rib cage. It looks it's pretty brutal. I mean, it looks great. It looks great, but it was it was hard as a dad to watch him uh, to, to go through that process. But it, it's kind of like a rite of passage for him, and, and especially in the Polynesian culture. And uh, he he manned up. Proud Polynesian. Kevin Mawai, every Wednesday, you can catch him right here in the center of the week. Follow him on Twitter, at Kevin Mawai. Hit us at 104.5 ESPN. Have a good Wednesday out there.